Today's guest is an NFL legend. He played 11 years in the NFL and was a star receiver. And now he's one of the few NFL analysts who always say the truth. He's the face of CVS football with his dynamic style and amazing knowledge. It's my absolute honor to welcome to Jake's Takes, Nate Burleson. What's up, Nate? How you doing? Man, what's up, Jay? How you doing, man? I am doing amazing. I'm so pumped. Thank you so much to NFL Canada for inviting me out to this. That's right. And of course, huge shout out to Natasha for being the absolute best. She's so genuinely amazing. That's the original MD. A hundred percent. She one of a kind type of person. That's right. That's always right. looking out so for other are people. You one of a kind. Oh man. yeah. Legend you know. in the making. Oh yeah. Thank you so much, <laughs> Nate. Anyway, you ready to talk some football? Yeah, let's do it, man. I'm ready. Okay, let's go. All right. So you with the intro. I want I want to talk to you about the Buffalo Bills. Okay. First round pick this year. They had the 25th overall pick, yep. and they they drafted Utah tight end Dalton Kincaid, right? Yep. Everyone was thinking though that they would they would go with a defensive player, being that they lost Tremaine Edmonds, yep. and now that Von Miller's in some injury trouble. What were you thinking about this pick? Were you confused to see them draft another tight end? No, I actually have Kincaid on my fantasy roster, so I have some faith that he's going to put up some numbers. You have to think about what the Buffalo Bills need. They think that firepower is the necessity to get them over the hump because what we've seen over the last few years is every year they have one of the best rosters in the business. They are looked at as Super Bowl favorites, but there is that direct comparison to what happened in the 90s. Some of the best teams ever made it to the Super Bowl and couldn't finish the job. And I know this squad, they don't want to do that. So who have they been losing to? Who has, who has been making that leap into the Super Bowl? The Bengals, absolute firepower on offense. The Chiefs, absolute firepower on offense. And who's one of the best offensive players on the Chiefs outside of Patrick Mahomes? Travis Kelsey, oh, yeah. tight end. So it's not just about getting the ball to Stephon Diggs or having some running backs out the backfield. You have to have a well-balanced offense. So that's why they went with the tight end position, hoping that it can help the Bills get over the hump. 100%. I see what you're saying. Yep. And the foul pyres, a power for sure is there. Oh, yeah. They got James Cook as the running back who I wanted to talk to you about. Right. Amazing young back mm -hmm. coming off a fr freshly off an amazing rookie season yep. where he actually averaged over five yards per carry, 5.7. That's right. That, that's Look ridiculous. Some people don't think that's going to be able to be sustainable. That's almost six yards. A that's, pop. He actually averaged six yards for, for all four years in college. That's right. Do you think they're going to give him the amount of usage that he's gonna, that he deserves this year, maybe treat him like his brother? Yeah, no doubt. Dalvin is a beast now with the Jets. But, you know, I, I think they do it more by committee there, and they take it week by week. The one person that will get the bulk of the targets on a weekly basis, it will be Stephon Diggs. But then after that, you start to rotate and figure out who's going to do damage depending on who you're playing. I mean, Cook has shown flashes. He's shown that he can run in between the tackles, catch out of the backfield. Um, but what they have is a two, even sometimes three running back system. Um, but we will see growth coming out of last year. Because when you have a rookie season like that, all it does is build confidence, not only in him as a running back, but in the offensive coordinator being able to dial up his number. Yeah, I'm very excited to see what the Bills do this season. Oh, for sure. Anyway, oh, for sure. I, I know how much you love predictions, so I got my prediction uh, for you right okay, now. Okay, what I'm, you got? What I'm, you got? I'm expecting to hear you, though, repeat it on CBS since it's such a great prediction. So okay. buckle up, okay? I I'm buckling up. I'm strapped <laughs> up. Here you go. Oh, yeah. Undrafted free agent Justin Ross is going to be a beast this year. Six Ooh. foot four receiver, amazing footwork, elite hands, and the, the spots are open. Yeah. Let, me, let me just tell you why. MVS, obviously a deep ball guy, yes. not, not a true number one. Yeah. Same thing with Kadarius Toney, gadget mm -hmm. player. And it, it's just open. And he played in college with T. Higgins, and we saw him be that guy. Yeah. He was the number two ranked um, receiver right behind Amon Ross St. Brown in the nation. Yep. And now the spots are open. He's got this. His only concern is injuries. Yeah. I'm telling you, this man's about to go crazy. I like that. You know, that's a great prediction. Just for the simple fact that you come in a little bit unassuming. Defenses aren't going to focus on a guy like that. And the reason I know that is because as a number two receiver, I was able to do that. Playing with Randy Moss, sometimes defenses would forget about me. And I knew at that point it was time to ease. Same thing when I played with Calvin Johnson. As soon as the defense started to focus on the pass catchers that they saw balling out week in and week out, and they forgot about little old Nate Burleson, I think Justin Ross is going to have the same type of impact. If you shift the defense and give him one-on-one -on -one coverage with that, side, that size and speed and also those hands, he's going to do damage. 100%. Yeah, I like that prediction. Oh, I'll yeah. steal that from you. Oh, yeah. You can let Perfect. me have that? You, you can mention it, All but right. make sure to put my name in there. I got you. I got you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, so I wanted to ask you about the Jaguars offense this year. Mm -hmm. They're coming off an amazing season. Obviously, they got that crazy playoff win against the Chargers. Yeah, yeah. And Trevor Lawrence was just amazing. But 
that was with him playing with a number one receiver in Christian Kirk, who's yeah. very good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I don't think he's the real number one. Ooh. You know who is the real number one? Real number Calvin one? Ridley, the man yeah. they're getting back from suspension. What are you expecting? Like, what are you expecting his role to be in this offense? Listen, I would bet that Calvin Ridley is going to have a good season. And no pun intended because I know he got in trouble for betting. But Calvin Ridley is an absolute monster. I know you saw the clips over the summer where he was doing drills looking like oh, yeah. he was in fast forward compared to the other professional wide receivers that he is going, going up against. I do think that Calvin Ridley has a lot to prove. You know, regardless of what happened, he had to sit out. When you look at the game from a bird's eye view and it's a mistake that you made, you come back hungrier. So lost time, which means the clock is ticking. He wants to get to that next deal, which means money is on the line. And on top of that, you have Trevor Lawrence, who was in this part of his season where he went from the young puck trying to prove himself to the guy that really wants to establish as a wants to be established as a young veteran. I think Cabot really is going to show up and show out. We saw flashes of that in Atlanta. Now let's see if he can do that with this offense. I just feel like the Jags have to start fast and they can't have those wildly inconsistent games. Yeah, for sure. Because then at the end of the season, you're biting your nails, sitting on the edge of your seat, hoping that you make the playoffs. And then you think to yourself, what if we would have started faster? and learned how to be consistent, then we wouldn't be in the situation we're in, which is basically we have to win certain games while watching the scoreboard the last weeks of the season, hoping somebody else loses so we can get in. For sure, you gotta start on time. That's right. Last question, that good? Yeah, 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 let's do this. Okay, so I'm about to have some fun right here. All right. We're gonna switch this around. Okay. I've always wanted to say I've been asked for an opinion, an NFL opinion by yeah. a huge insider okay. or analyst. Okay. So anything around the NFL, maybe tonight's game or something you want to ask me about for an I opinion. got you, Jay. Listen, um, I am an analyst. I'm an insider. I'm a host. You know, I, I, I'm like you. I can do it all. Oh, yeah. Okay, so here's my question. I want you to give me your undoubtedly confident Super Bowl pick and the MVP. All right? And then I want you to give me your dark horse Super Bowl pick and dark horse MVP. So I need you to go with your gut, tell me what you think it is, and then I want you to give me that off the beaten path pick that people might not be thinking about. Oh, I like that. I like that, yeah. Nate. Okay, so for my Super Bowl pick, I'm going to go with the 49ers. I, 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 would, I would be thinking Eagles, but the thing I'm thinking is Eagles got the hardest um, the schedule. Yeah. They ranked it by the NFL and everything. Yeah. I think it's going to be hard for them to win the division with the Cowboys being there. Yep. And I think the 49ers got a great path. They're going to be all over that. And Brock Purdy. And Brock Purdy's going to be great this year. Yeah. They just they He's got an amazing team. Okay, I like that. And then for my for my MVP, I'm going to go with I can't get a, a bet against Patrick Mahomes. I'm right there with you. Can't can't bet against page. him. We're on the same 100%. Page. Then for my my dark horse a little bit. Not so much of a dark horse, but he he's not he's probably not. I don't think he's the betting favorite right now. I'm gonna go with biases. I'm I'm a Ravens fan. I'm gonna go with Lamar Jackson. Ooh, I like. I that. love I love Lamar I Jackson. Number two MVP in oh, his yeah. career. Hundred percent. Okay. I actually did you see Stephen A. Smith mentioning they were like talking about Lamar Joe, Joe Burrow who has a better chance mm -hmm. when MVP is like Lamar's the MVP, not Joe. Yeah. And, well, look at Lamar and what he, what he can do, and now he got OBJ and some weapons around him. Lamar's gonna shock a lot of people this year, and he got the the deal. So sometimes once you get the money out of the way, then you can just play. Hundred percent, and then. For my Dark Horse Super Bowl, oh, that's a good question. Ah, uh, I'm thinking, not the Lions. They'll make a good run this year, yeah. in my opinion. Right. Jaguars, maybe not. I'm going to go with, should I, should I bring bias? No, let's not bring bias into this. Let's go <laughs> Let's go with the Cowboys, actually. Ah, I like that. That's I'm going with the Cowboys. It's America's team. People love the Cowboys. Whether it's good or bad, people love it when you mention that team. I know Jerry Jones would be happy about that. Of course. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nate. Yeah, thank you, man. Hey, when you blow up, don't forget about me, all right? Of course not. Thank all you right. so much.